Hi guys, it's Monica. In this video, I'm actually going to do the tag that Susan from Little Poet did, which is the eight questions. And it's all about the road to beautiful. Truth, confessions, you name it. So I decided to film some of this outside as long as I guess it doesn't get too noisy from the neighbors. But I really thought about this tag and I really hesitated to do it because I was afraid it would bring up a lot of emotions. And you know, it says truth, right? Confessions, right? So yeah, truth and confessions. So the first one is as a child, did I feel beautiful? And I'll answer that in a moment. So stay tuned. I know that was a tease, wasn't it? Oh my gosh, sorry. I had forgot to, to pause for the intro. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I truly appreciate it. And all of you regular viewers who subscribe, who come and visit me in every video, no matter how good or bad or indifferent it is, I appreciate every single one of you. So back to the tag. Did I feel beautiful as a child? So this is not gonna be a surprise to most of you. If you know me, you know that I love my Barbie dolls. I still have my Barbie dolls displayed in my, um, in my, you see it when I'm filming, you see them in the background. So I still have all my Barbie dolls displayed. I'm trying to get a better light here. And see the pile of wood. Not, not such a pretty background, huh? I'll keep walking. But anyway, so I, I still have all my Barbie dolls displayed. So I grew up with Barbie. And I'm not gonna blame Barbie for how I feel about beauty because I don't really, I don't think it has a thing to do with it. But I was always more Midge than Barbie. Although I loved my Barbie. I absolutely loved my Barbie. I was always more Midge. I was the brown haired, freckle faced, gawky person. Never considered pretty, never considered beautiful by any stretch, but I was always a good friend. I was always that good friend. But when I was really little, and I grew up and I went to grade school. I had Barbie. Barbie was my companion. And because I'm an immigrant, when I first went to school, I had a very heavy accent. I was different. Everyone knew I was different. And the school system, it wasn't the same as today, you know, with the special needs classes and the extra help and the things that people would do to help you get settled in or get used to an environment. It wasn't like that at all. So here I was an immigrant child, right? And um, I, I didn't fit in. I spoke different. I looked different in most cases. My mom made my clothes. She didn't buy any clothes. She made it, handmade clothes. And it was beautiful clothes, but certainly it wasn't the store-bought stuff. So I got teased horribly because that was the second question or part of the first question, did I feel beautiful? And was I ever teased as a child? I was teased horribly when I first started school in America. Now, I mentioned that I really loved my Barbie dolls. And my Barbie dolls was basically my closest friends, really. And um, because I was teased so bad in school, I think I just kind of like built a wall around me, so to speak. But the end of the first part of school, September to December, it was, it was horrible. I was the new person. I sounded weird, the whole nine yards. And then around Christmas time, everyone started to be nice to me. You know, the kids, the other kids, they were nice to me. They were, they were talking to me and I was like, wow, 
I'm, I'm accepted, you know? I was, I was like thrilled. I was having friends and, and uh, I was happy and things of that nature. And so right around, right before the day we were leaving school for Christmas break, the day we were leaving school for Christmas break, they were, we were all outside waiting for the bus. And the group of my tormentors who were very friendly to me came up to me and they had a wrapped present. And they said, they said, we have a present for you. I was like dumbstruck. I was like, I was like, really? A present for me? I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. And they said, yeah. And they handed me a box that was wrapped. And they said, go ahead, open it, open it. So I started to open it. And I could see it was one of those, you know, the old Barbie doll boxes, the long, skinny Barbie doll boxes. I could see it was a Barbie doll box and I was like, I was getting like so excited and I could hear them laughing. You know, they were all starting to laugh a little bit and, um, and I didn't quite, I didn't quite get it until I opened the box and they cracked up laughing. Inside the box was some money, coins mostly, and a note. And the note said, I'll never forget it, I can still visualize it. The note said, we got up a collection to send you back where you belong, you dirty Nazi kraut. I was like, I was like, I didn't know what to do. You know, I think I just, I just put a, I just put a smile on my face. I didn't know what else to do. I didn't want anyone to see me cry. I didn't want anyone to see that they hurt me. So I just, I just put a smile on my face, but inside, inside it was heartbroken. I was totally heartbroken inside and I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't believe that I actually fell for the fact that I thought they were actually getting me a gift, that I thought I was actually getting accepted. I couldn't believe I thought that. And you know, to this day, I do know some of those people, some of those kids, they've grown up. I don't hold it against them. I don't. I and I have forgiven and I have and I have forgotten. Well that's a lie. Right? I said this is truth, right? I haven't forgotten. I believe I've forgiven and I put it in the right place. But I think to this day, that is why I am such an advocate for the underdog. I don't I don't like to see people teased. I don't like to see people hurt. I don't like to see people abused. I'm just a total advocate for the underdog. I always root for the underdog. And, and I think it's why. I was never picked to be on a sports, you know. Um, nobody ever said, Red Rover, Red Rover, send Monica right over. No, I never got picked for that stuff. But that's all right. It made me, I think, a better person. But when I read Susan's questions and it said, were you picked on as a child? I said, I don't know if I can really tell the truth. I don't know if I can really say those words, but I did. So, yeah, I have forgiven. I have forgotten. Well, that's a lie, like I said. I definitely have forgiven. I don't hold it against any of them. And when I see them today as adults, they probably don't even remember. So, yeah, I really never felt beautiful. And I really, I guess I'll never forget the teasing. And that shaped me, I think, into the person that I am today. Good, bad, or indifferent. It made me who I am. And, and that's okay. So I think the next question was, men value a certain, you know, three traits in a woman. <laughs> and I think that question, holy moly, um, do I, what do I think those traits are that men value in a woman? I, I'll tell you, I think most men want, they want their woman to be independent to a certain degree, but they also want them to be dependent on them. I think men need to feel like, not like they're in charge, because my husband never feels that way, but to feel like they're taken care of. 
somebody that they're taking care of their wife or their family so you know and I don't think that like Jay does not want me dependent on him I don't think as far as I know and I don't think most men want that either I think they do value independence to a certain degree but I also think that they value appearance a lot so yeah independence I think appearance is huge and um, I mean, it's the same thing. We value appearance in our, in our men, you know, in our, our men. We want them to look as good as they possibly can. And I'm sure that, you know, they, they feel the same way. I'm sorry that my camera's shaking. I'm outside walking and I don't know why I decided to film outside, but I did. So the third question I believe was, why do I wear makeup? And do I feel pretty in makeup? And do I feel pretty when I don't wear makeup. So there lies the crux of it. I never, when I get up in the morning and I do my skincare, I feel good. I feel good that I did it. I love that I did it. I love that I got it done. I, I love that I'm facing a day with a clean face and my skin is halfway decent for my age. I put my makeup on and I think, oh, okay, that looks good. Oh, that eye look came out really good today. That's, that's what I think. I don't think, oh, you look so pretty. You're so pretty. I just, yeah. So whether I have my makeup on or not, I look at myself the exact same way, except one way I'm sort of in my natural canvas and the other I have some paint on. And I feel better when I've got my makeup on, but I never really thought about it as pretty one way or the other. Probably goes back to not feeling pretty one way or the other. But so I never really thought of it that way. I don't know, you know? No, I just really like wearing makeup. Oh, the next question. <laughs> what is my most favorite trait in a woman? I think I really feel the most comfortable around women who are good listeners. And even though there are women that I talk to that I can't see sometimes that, you know, I'm texting or whatever, but you can almost sense their smile by their words. So I value a smile. I am very much a smiley person and I'm a good listener. So I think that to me, being a good listener and being a smiley person, that is something I value in other people. So when somebody smiles at me, it, I, I just light right up. You know, I just light right up. And when I'm talking and someone is actually listening to me, I think that's the most amazing thing. You know, so I, I value the friendship that other women truly, truly have and their beautiful smiles and when they listen. What traits do I least value? <laughs> there are some women that it is all about me, the me, 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 and you know, what we call it in my industry, AFAB, anything for a buck. So I'm in real estate sales and there are some people that do have that attitude. And I'm not saying it's wrong to have a money making or be motivated by money. I'm not saying that's wrong, but anything for a buck, AFAB, yeah. And you see it in YouTube and I see it in real life. So when I see, say, a YouTuber sell their soul for subscribers or for likes, you know, it's sad. That's my least favorite trait. YouTube is a fun place for me and I enjoy my time on YouTube. I enjoy watching videos on YouTube, but I want to feel like that content creator is doing it because they enjoy it too and not because of the AFAB anything for a buck. And that's got nothing to do with getting free products. I get free products. You know, I enjoy getting free products. You know, um, yeah. So it's okay to be money motivated for sure. But that is not, that is not at all a pretty trait in my opinion. Not at all. The next one, oh my gosh. When do I feel the most beautiful? Hmm. You know, it's going to sound corny, but right now I feel beautiful. I'm just walking in my backyard. 
I think I feel the most beautiful when I'm doing something I enjoy. You know, when I'm smelling flowers or I'm walking on the beach, I'm camping, I'm with my husband. That's when I feel the most, the most beautiful. And it isn't after I have a full face on. It isn't after I've done all my makeup. Uh, I know that I look better, I feel better when I've got my makeup on, but yeah, I, it might sound like a cop out, but I feel the most beautiful when I'm doing something I enjoy. And sometimes in the morning, I'll get up and I'll sit under my back porch and I'll listen to all the birds. We have bird feeders, we have bird bath, you know, so I'll just listen to all the birds. And I think that's like, that's amazing when I listen to the music that nature makes. So yeah, I love it. Do I think aging, what do I think of aging? As a, is it a fork in the road? I guess it is kind of a fork in the road because I know at 66, I'm on the tail end of it, you know? And um, it is a fork in the road because you can choose to be as strong as you can be given the circumstances of your age. Everyone says age is a number and it is, it's, it's a number. But more importantly, I think it's an attitude. I think age is an attitude. If you feel like you're old, you're gonna act old. You're gonna look old. So to me, age is an attitude and I choose in this fork in my road to go into this next phase of my life, the next chapter of my life, doing the best I can to stay healthy, to enjoy the things that I like to enjoy, to spend time with my family, stuff like that. And I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry. I remember when I was a young woman, I was in a hurry to experience everything. I'm not in a hurry. Not at all. Not at all. I think the next question was, what do I want next year to look like? Well, I think I'd like next year to be a healthy year for us all because with COVID-19, it's been awful. We had a number of plans change this year. We had a big UK trip that we had for three weeks, uh, London, Scotland, Ireland. We had that planned. We've had to postpone that. We had a camping trip 10 days at the beach that was canceled on us. We've had other things that were canceled on us. We've had a wedding that's been postponed a year, which is you know so devastating for, the, for my son and his fiance. But the wedding was in September and they just don't feel comfortable. Her mother is in um, overseas, so they have to make sure that they can get her here too for flights. So there's a number of factors. And even my state convention in September was postponed. We have another wedding in November and I'm hoping that that one goes off, you know, and that's gonna be more of a road trip for Jay and I because it's in Atlanta. So I'm hoping that that, everything goes well with that wedding. But I'm hoping next year we have a COVID-19 free year. I hope that my mother and father are still with me. And I hope that my father I hope that I can give him a hug and not worry about infecting him with anything. So, yeah, next year. Yeah, next year, another year, another summer, another fall. And whatever it brings us, I hope it brings us all happiness and health. I mean, that is ultimately the most important. I think I get all the questions. So I know it's kind of like sort of a long and rambly thing. It's like shaky camera and all. Um, but I do think I get all the questions. So I'm going to try to put it together and, um, you know, upload this. I hope that I didn't mess up Susan's tag. If you're a content creator and you want to do the tag, please go right ahead. I tag anyone that hasn't been tagged, anyone that just wants to do it, go right ahead and do it. It's very thought provoking. I found it very emotional. So anyways. Thank you guys so much. And thank you, Susan, for tagging me.